Hey, this is Craig and Lum from Heathen, and you're listening to Sonic Perspectives. interview with Sonic Perspectives. My name is Samantha Buckman, and today I am here with Craig and Mum, songwriter and guitarist from thrash metal band Heathen. Returning with their first album in 10 years, titled Empire of the Blind, it looks like this Bay Area thrash band is ready to make their reappearance on the scene. It is awesome to have you here today. And like I said, it's been about a decade since fans have heard anything from Heathen. So what exactly makes Empire of the Blind so special and makes you excited to get it out there? Well, um, you know, it's just been a long time uh, coming for getting a new album done. Uh, we started the writing process back in 2012 uh, when we first signed with Nuclear Blast. It's great to finally get the beast off our backs, so to speak. Uh, we were all really, really happy with the, the way that the album came out, and we just can't wait for people to hear it. So considering there was almost 20 years between the second and the third album, and now there's ten year, about 10 years between the third and the fourth album, what qualities makes Heathen so timeless? I, I think they, they have a different sound. I mean, I, I'm thinking from a fan perspective when I heard the first two records. The band had this uh, sort of unique sound to it. It's an, a different mixture of elements, I think, than a lot of the other thrash bands. And also have a, a melodic vocalist in David White that can sing almost anything. I think the variety uh, of, of what this band does is great. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, the classic albums that we grew up listening to and, and really sort of loving had a lot of variety and a lot of different elements in them that took the listener on sort of a, a journey or a roller coaster ride throughout the album. And so, you know, this band has kind of always, always done that. And while we haven't uh, consistently released new albums on a regular basis, we know that when we do release something, it has to be great. And as Lee would say, fine wine takes time. What would you say the main ties are between Empire of the Blind and the prior Heathen albums, both the more recent one and the older ones? Uh, well, the variety that I mentioned is definitely something that's kind of continued throughout. I mean, even from the very first Heathen record, um, a song like World's End had some sort of almost progressive qualities or what people call progressive. This new album, Empire of the Blind, is is sort of a the next step in the evolution of the band. We're sort of taking all of the elements that the band does and that we feel the band does well and sort of pushing them to the extremes. So or some of the fast songs are faster, some of the heavy songs are heavier, the melodic stuff is maybe a little bit more melodic. We just write what comes to us naturally and and I think the band always has. You know, they we're not afraid to uh, do different things, um, to do ballads or, you know, different types of songs. And I think that that it, it makes for a really cool album listening experience. And that's that's sort of continued throughout the band's history, I think, with all of the all of the albums. You've mentioned this variety and especially between the melody and the speed and those progressive tendencies. Which tracks on Empire of the Blind really highlight these the most? And I guess... Even if they're like broken apart, which ones really bring out these qualities the most? They're all different from each other. You know, the songs all stand on their own and then work collectively in sort of in the running order that they're in as a as a, a great listening experience. If I had to pick a song or or multiple songs that really highlight sort of the different things that the band does. The title track, it has this really cool epic feel that almost harkens back to like 70s era Rainbow, like the song Stargazer or something, where it just has this cool sort of epic feel. There's a, a middle section in that song that sort of also harkens back to like the classic um, dual lead guitar stuff um, that, that uh, we grew up really enjoying listening to a song like sun in my hand is definitely more um 
I don't know. It, it's it's maybe a little bit more accessible, but at the same time, it's it's got this cool mixture of like you know dark imagery in the lyrics, but ultimately like a positive message. The music on that is is really heavy, but also uh, very melodic. You know, another song like Shrine of Apathy is is a, a ballad in the true sense of a ballad. Instead of it just being a you know what I would call a soft song. It's got real depth and, you know, meaning in the, in the lyrics and they, the way that the music sort of, uh, works with the, with the vocals. It, the intention is to have you feel something kind of like when you used to hear the classic ballads of the seventies, you know, Dream On by Aerosmith or even Stairway to Heaven, you know, those kind of things. A Fine Red Mist is the instrumental on the record where we have guest appearances from Gary Holt and Rick Hunold of the original Exodus H team, and also um, Doug Piercy, uh, who used to be in Heathen. I think everybody's probably heard The Blight by now, uh, which is a fast song, but it's also um, really melodic. So uh, there's a lot of that throughout the album. You know, I mean, I could go through each track probably and tell you each have that variety. Each song has variety in it in some ways, too, so... The variety is definitely something that makes you guys really unique. But at the end of the day, you're very much associated with Thrash Acts, uh, obviously Exodus being the primary one, and are Heathens usually classified as a thrash metal band. So how do you balance that thrash imagery when you're songwriting? And do you ever feel that you're going too far away from that? Uh, No, this band doesn't put boundaries on what it does. There aren't any rules. It seems with modern like modern thrash and a lot of the fan base seems to have like rules uh for for what makes thrash uh you know what tuning you're in what speed the songs have to be at all, all of that kind of stuff and it's thrash metal was never supposed to be about that it was supposed to be about breaking the rules so this band doesn't put walls up around what it does. We don't just do one type of thing. And I think in some ways, you know, the Bay, being a part of the Bay Area scene, obviously, you know, Heathen is associated with Bay Area thrash and the whole thrash scene uh, from that era. But, you know, going back even to, you know, around the first and second album, I mean, there are interviews where Lee is basically saying we're not just one thing or the other. We're not just thrash metal. We're metal. We're, we do all kinds of stuff. And that's always ha- that's always been the attitude. I think in some ways it's it's been harder for Heathen to get traction because we don't just do one thing. We don't just do thrash. But that's OK. Uh, you know, I mean, this band is what it is. And we do we we do what sounds good to us. So there are a lot of elements. You know what? The things that make up this band sound are a mixture of thrash metal, that epic sort of. 70s rock kind of feel that I mentioned before, the dual guitar harmony stuff from bands like Thin Lizzy and Judas Priest. And, you know, I mean, that those are the elements that make up this band. So it's not just one thing. And I think that, I mean, frankly, a lot of the stuff that I hear where where the thrash bands kind of have rules on what they do, the album listening experience isn't all that interesting. You know, one thrash song after the other, there's no roller coaster ride. I think, you know, bands like Metallica realized that a long time ago that they wanted to have variety and on their records. And uh, in some ways, you know, that helped them transcend metal altogether. What many people, including Teenage Me, uh, didn't like that. But I get it. You know, I mean, in terms of the songwriting part of it, that's what makes it interesting is to do different things. Heathen's not the only one that's done different things. You yourself have been a member of a lot of bands. We've got Prototype, Psychosis, you've played with Exodus, and you're with Heathen. So how have the experiences in all these different bands made you um, who you are as a songwriter and a guitarist for Heathen? Well, um, when I started playing, um, my my first band was Psychosis. Um, I started that band when I was in high school. And then uh, in the very early 90s, uh, current heathen bass player jason mirza joined psychosis we were an la thrash band really trying to emulate the bay area sound that bay area thrash sound is sort of part of my dna at this point it's something that i've I've always loved listening to and loved playing 
that uh, has always been a part of anything that I've done in terms of creative stuff. I mean, in, even in prototype, I think, you know, the, the thrash element of that and that that's what comes from me, you know, a lot of that. And then the melodic stuff, too. It's been a strange journey. There was a period there where I didn't know if I was going to ever get to do what I wanted to do with my life, which is be a full time musician. And then uh, I got asked to join Heathen and then. A few years later, I got asked to tour with Exodus, and it's just been been an amazing experience. I've just uh, I've gone on my own roller coaster ride with all these bands over the last uh, few years, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. These last few years, both you and um, Lee have been obviously on the road a lot with Exodus. So, how has that impacted this album, Empire of the Blind? And I guess how has your time with Exodus um, shaped you? You know, it, it definitely impacted the al- album in terms of us getting it done. I started writing music for this record back in uh, 2012 when we signed with Nuclear Blast. And then we did a, a bunch of touring. Even in 2013, I did some uh, touring with Heathen. And then I did my first tour with Exodus in Europe. So a lot of that year, uh, you know, not a whole lot got done in terms of writing and everything. And I got back to it in 2014. And uh, I pretty much had about half the record written by then. And then I think from about 2015 through 2019, I was just super busy with Exodus. And so was Lee. So we really just didn't have the ability to focus on um, finishing writing for the album and getting into the studio until uh, last year. Uh, I only had two shows with Exodus last year uh, before my commitments with them were fulfilled and and so I spent all of last year working on the record and we spent a lot of time recording and it, it definitely impacted it but in a way I'm glad that we had the extra time with it to really be able to fully you know think about all of the all of the details of this record there are, there's a lot of detail and, and depth in the songs and I, I'm glad I had the extra time to work on it. it it was frustrating at times having to wait but um you know, we're, we're happy with the end result, you know, in terms of how Exodus shaped me, I learned a lot from those guys, uh, touring with them. Um, they're great human beings and they're great, uh, people to, to spend time with. And, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I also learned a lot about how to be a band from those guys. You know, they're really a family. They care about each other and they, you know, they do everything they can to sort of, uh, lift each other up and, it was a great thing to witness. They're sort of a ideal band in terms of how to be a band. So that part was awesome to spend time around and with and learn from. And it was great. And I'm, I'm hoping that some of that stuff will carry on through uh, with the new lineup of Heathen. And I think, I think it will. I mean, we've got a great group of guys in the band and it's going to be, it's going to be cool to finally get out uh, of the house and, go out and play live with these guys. He even has a new lineup. You've added a bass player and a drummer. So could you talk a little bit about what it was like adding them to the band and how they've been fitting in? Yeah, sure. Well, like I mentioned, I've known Jason Mirza since the early 90s. Um, He's been in psychosis with me. Before he came down to L.A., he was living up in the Bay Area and and used to hang out with uh, a band that David played in called The Laughing Dead. And he's kind of always wanted to be a part of Heathen and wanted to audition for them even back when uh, getting ready to release Victims of Deception. And so it's that part, you know, I mean, everybody knows Jason already. And he played a show with us filling in a few years ago. And it was just a great fit. He's obviously been great to have in the band. And then Jim, we've known Jim for many years now, toured with him uh, when he was in Generation Kill. He was also a, a drum tech for Tom Hunting and Exodus for a little while. And uh, both of those guys are just, they're great people. They're great musicians. And I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be great having them in the band. You know, we kind of just really wanted to put an end to the sort of revolving door of lineup changes that this band has had over the years. And I think we're going to, I think we're going to do great with these guys for, for the future. And obviously, plans have been derailed a little bit in the present for um, pandemic-related reasons. But what are you most looking forward to about getting out on the road with this album and with the new lineup? Uh, you know, play, playing live and connecting with the fans. I think that's the great part of touring. 
sometimes those smaller shows where you can really connect directly with the fans in the front row. And I mean, the, those are sort of special moments in, in touring and, you know, playing live. And I think that's, that's what we kind of miss, um, for heathen, you know, being able to play the, the heathen songs live. It's been a few years. Um, obviously we've never played any of these, uh, new songs live and, uh, it's going to be, I mean, some of them will be a little bit of a challenge. There's, there's a lot of guitar work on the record. So we'll have to see which parts get, uh, get replicated live. But I think just that and just going out and having fun, you know, having fun with each other, having fun with the, with the fans and, and getting to play in some great countries and, and venues, you know, we're just really looking forward to getting back out there when all this uh, pandemic stuff finally goes away. In terms of translating those songs to that live environment, you did mention that there is some more um, complex guitar work on there. And obviously that definitely adds to the sound of the album. Do you have any songs that were particularly challenging to write or songs that you are, I guess, most proud of um, seeing that final final version? Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of, of challenging, the songwriting part of it wasn't necessarily the challenge. It's it's the fitting all the layers that are in there together and making them work. So on The Blight, for example, the chorus in that song has uh, four guitar parts going at once. And then there's a vocal melody and a vocal harmony. And getting all those to kind of work with each other and still be catchy was tricky. But I, I'm glad that I was able to sort of work it out. It, it ended up sounding really cool. I'm really proud of the way that song came out. Empire of the Blind, that song, uh, the, there's there's a second guitar part or layer that sort of goes throughout almost the entire song. That song was the last one uh, that was finished for the album. And when that second guitar part was added, it took the song to a whole different level. It was a cool moment when I started working on that extra part. I didn't know where it was going to go, but it, it really adds this extra layer of depth and um, another dimension to the song. And it gives it this really cool, epic sort of vibe through through the whole song. And I, I, I really like that. I mean, I'm I'm really proud of that. It's great to hear about the attention to detail that went into the instrumentation and the songwriting. But I was wondering if you could elaborate a little more on the concepts behind the album, like the lyrical concepts and the message that you're putting out with Empire of the Blind. Yeah, sure. Um, there are sort of two separate sets of topics, I would say, on the album. So there's sort of the social political stuff, and then there's some, some more uh, personal types of lyrics. The social political stuff, um, a lot of it sort of revolves around how <clears throat> our news media and social media are being infused with propaganda, basically being used to sort of manipulate the population um, and get them to feel a certain way or another uh, about various topics. We, we see a lot of that here in the United States. And it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of concerning when you're when you're watching something that's called the news and it's supposed to be fact. Here, at least, we don't know what's fact and what's fiction a lot of the time. Much of it is there's some kind of, uh, you know, political agenda. Uh, it's skewed towards one side of the political fence or the other. And um, and it's sort of a, a dangerous time when people are kind of connected so heavily to, you know, social media and the Internet in general. And they're getting so much information from it. And a lot of the information that they're getting on a daily basis we don't even know if it's like fact or fiction. There's no fact checking. You know, people can post whatever they want and claim it's true. It's just, you know, it's kind of a scary time. So a lot of the social and political kind of topics tie in with that stuff. And, and these are themes that, I mean, honestly, they've been going on for since the dawn of time, probably um, the use of propaganda and stuff in the media and on commercials and all that stuff. We've it's not like it's new. It's just that it's um, it's gone to a whole different level with the increase in use in, in the Internet and social media and all of that stuff. You know, I, I read something the other day, which may not be true, <laughs> uh, but it said something that to the effect that most people these days get their um, get their news from social media. And it, it's just a you know, it's a strange time in terms of of getting information because we're getting a lot of it in some ways, maybe too much. 
So that's sort of the the social political stuff. In terms of the the more personal stuff, um, he has has kind of always had some songs on the records where there's they're more of a, a personal journey. Sun in My Hand is certainly one of those songs. Uh, in Black is also another one of those songs. And uh, and Shrine of Apathy is is as well. They are they're all very different. Uh, when I write lyrics, I like to leave them a little bit open to interpretation so that people can take what they want from it, so to speak. Um, I think that that's always a cool thing to you could you could read the lyrics for Blood to Be Let, for example, probably four different ways in terms of how, what they mean, and I think that's kind of cool. Just like the the music, we have a lot of variety sort of in the in the lyrics as well. And I know some people have have been asking me if it's a concept album. It's not. Um, there are some themes that sort of run through it in terms of the lyrics. There are actually a couple of themes that are in there musically that run through the album too, which most people probably will never notice. But, you know, we just like to have a lot of sort of variety within the, the album, even with the lyrics. Yeah, for sure. I um, really enjoyed hearing just how much work went into this album. Thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciated all of your detailed answers. Awesome. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the interview and I'm glad you, you liked the album and everything. And, you know, if you need anything more in terms of information or, or have additional questions or whatever, feel free to just let me know or, or Kristen at Nuclear Blast. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. You too. Bye-bye. You just heard an interview with Craig and Lum from the thrash metal band Heathen. Heathen's new album, Empire of the Blind, will release on September 18th. For more interviews like this one and much more, make sure to follow Sonic Perspectives on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Closing out today is a song from Heathen's upcoming album, a song called The Blight.
Children with dead inside 